Hey uh, folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to another episode of our YouTube series of Dwarf Fortress, where I try to be somewhat tutorially, somewhat explain in more beginner-friendly terms what we're doing. Not exactly the same as a true tutorial, you know, click here and then click there, but hopefully noobs can follow along and enjoy the great game that is Dwarf Fortress. I mean, uh, a great thing is made even better by sharing it, right? Or something like that. I think that's a quote I'm paraphrasing. I don't know. Anyway, we uh, we recently expanded our tavern over here to, um, well, actually, we expanded our dining area to be a tavern, and then we're getting ready to set up some bedrooms over here, too. We've just got a bunch of a bunch of doors and beds in the queue. Hopefully, we can get some uh, proper, some more individual bedrooms for all of our dwarves, keep them as happy as possible. A happy dwarf is a productive dwarf, or more, uh, more accurately, perhaps, a happy dwarf is one that doesn't go berserk and try to kill everyone. So that's a good thing. Also, if a dwarf, uh, we, we saw last episode a, um, a strange mood, an artifact. Dwarves who are in very bad moods can get into some very dark, strange moods. We also did go and set up some walls over here on the surface, as well as a bridge, which is now complete, although it is not connected to anything yet, so we cannot retract it. Uh, the other thing we've set up is a little bit of a slope over here. Could use stairs as well, but slope's kind of nice. A little slope here so that we can climb. Uh, from the ground onto the ledge over here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to put a floor over here so that we can completely seal ourselves in. Um, well, okay, there's two things. First of all, attackers will, to a fairly large extent, be dissuaded by a wall and our drawbridge once it goes up. However, people can climb walls. So theoretically, attackers could, in fact, climb up the side of the wall and get inside. Uh, not necessarily in large numbers, in my experience, but they can. We could go and defeat this by having an overhanging floor on the outside here to prevent them from being able to climb over. Um, and also would maybe give us a good platform to shoot down from. We may end up doing stuff exactly like that for, for the short term here. Um, I'm gonna go and floor everything over here. We might, we might still do some fancy defenses later on, but let's go ahead and get this sealed in. Oh, hey, Minotaur is taken by a fey mood. Minotaur is going to make an artifact. All right, before we go and do that, let's let's work on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into construction and floor. And I'm going to click. You know what? I'm going to say use closest material for this because this is going to be a fairly big job. Oh, we need 306 to do that. I guess I'll just have to designate a smaller amount to get started. So let me go and start a strip right over here. And actually, I guess I can keep going kind of one strip at a time. Oops, slight miscut there, but that's okay. I'm gonna keep going one strip at a time until it decides there's not enough material for that. Oh, it's gonna start using logs. It actually might even start using um, metal bars for this. Oh yeah, let me stop here and do that and hopefully it'll do blocks again i could do it manually picked okay rim tar this is this is minor tar has claimed the stone workers workshop oh i think it's this one here nope this one there you go has been claimed and it doesn't say anything about the dwarf um looking for material here because minor tar is currently out picking up some various materials now she might be able to pick up everything she wants right now or she might uh stop after a bit oh she's grabbing some more things we have platinum nuggets? Where the heck do we get platinum nuggets from? Wow. And coal and lignite. This is going to be a very flammable artifact. Okay, there we go. We've got some complaints over here. Now, these messages will include things that they've already grabbed. So they want rock. Well, we've got rock, but they also want tanned hides and yarn cloth. That's going to be tricky. Huh. That is going to be quite tricksy. Now we can get tanned hides if we, uh, so tan hide, they, meet, they, they want some leather. We should set up a butcher's workshop, do a little bit of hunting and get a tannery set up. Okay, I like to make my butcher's workshop on the top because here's the thing, when, a, when stuff gets butchered, it leaves a lot of like extra body parts sitting around and a lot of times those will rot and start to generate uh, miasma, like just stinky smells that makes people unhappy. Um, 
and that can be very tricky to, to manage underground. So I often put my butcher shop above ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And in fact, um, a fishing workshop is somewhat similar in that it leaves random body parts behind that really want to move, get moved into the refuse pile. And at least if they're on the surface, then it's going to be very close to the refuse pile. So I'm going to set up, uh, it's under farming, which again should be food industry. We're going to set up a butcher. I'm going to build it right here. And right next to it, I'm going to build a fishery. The same sort of mentality. So I'm going to get those started. Now, what's going to happen is these things will be considered outside. And by default, your dwarves don't collect refuse from outside. So if you just built these like this, eventually these things would be so clogged up with random body part garbage that their productivity would go to null. Now, there's a couple of different ways to fix it. You can, in the labor menu, understanding orders, you can change, oh, refuse and dumping over here. So you can see uh, workers ignore outside refuse. You can click on this so that they don't, they do gather it. But we don't want them going all over the map on the outside, just picking up garbage. We just want them cleaning these two. So what do we do? Well, let's make sure these are not outside. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna surround it by a wall and make sure it's got a roof on it, which, hey, we're already working on roofy stuff. So that's gonna be quite good. Um, so let's go and queue up some construction here. So we're gonna go build, oops, misclick, construction. Uh, wall. I'll, I'll do a manual selection. That's going to be okay. Let me pause for a sec because I'm going to make some adjustments over here. So what I'm kind of going to do here is I'm going to build a wall that surrounds this. Um, petrified wood block. Yeah, that's something you would mind. Yeah, we really don't have any blocks. I mean, I guess this could be made out of wood, which would be fine. I don't want to use iron bars for this construction. I mean, I could. I guess I should wait for more blocks to be made. Anyway, um, oops. I meant to zoom in here. What I want to do, come on, Quill, hit the right keys. There you go. What I want to do is we need to leave a vent. If we just enclose this and put one door in, again, we're going to have the same problem. Whereas things rot, we're going to get miasma in here. It's going to be super stinky and give your dwarves bad thoughts. We need to make sure that these things can vent to the outside. So to do that, what we're going to do is I'm going to cancel one wall. Instead of building a wall there, I'm going to build what's called a fortification. Fortification is basically arrow slits. Do that. And yeah, do it out of petrified wood. So this will be able to vent out to the rest of this space over here. I wonder, when the drawbridge is closed, is there any chance it's going to count as indoors? I don't think so. Anyway, as long as your places are venting to the outdoors, you don't have to worry about miasma. So we'll get this started. But yeah, between the floor and everything... Oh shit, see... Excuse me. Sorry for the language. Um... These things are using our iron blocks. That's a bit of an oopsie doodle. That's what I was a little afraid of. Um, I'm going to go and tear out these iron bits. Did that work? Doesn't they constructed walls, floors, and other to be removed? Oh, there you go. Once you unpause. I was like, I didn't see a symbol, but I unpause and then it shows up. Um, yeah, and some of these aren't... Uh, a bunch of these are blocks, but not all of them will be. I see more iron over there. I'm betting a lot of this line is going to be made out of iron. Okay, we'll just sort it out after. Man, I might wait for more blocks to catch up. And I really, I, I because there's so much floor, I didn't want to have to like manually click for every block. Look, see someone's walking on top of the wall here. Um, I didn't want to click on every block. But maybe I should, just to make sure we don't end up using these metal bars. Again, if it's closest, it's going to be okay. I think what I'm going to do... Here's what I'm going to do. Block, block. I'm going to do a one-time job. Of, like... Repeat this job times 100. Which will technically give us 400 blocks. But we knew we needed 300 and some for the flooring. So actually, it might not be as crazy as I thought. The petrified wood is actually kind of a nice color. Almost looks like gold or bronze. All right, so now that we have a butcher shop over here. Um, oh, did it? Butcher shop, I think, got made out of iron bars as well. Okay, now that we have a butcher shop over here, hunting can begin. So in our um, labor menu, we have a hunter's category. Again, because this needs equipment, someone has to explicitly be given this job, which right now we don't have anyone assigned to hunting at all. So we're going to take someone who's got a description that doesn't really matter. We've got a lot of people flagged as blacksmiths. So I'm going to pick one of them. Let's say Adel over here. 
and I'm going to go ahead and assign you to be a hunter. So they will go and equip a uh, crossbow, arrow, quiver, and things. Assuming we got those things, which we may not, which is actually a little bit tricksy. Um, but they will consistently hunt creatures on the surface. If we look at others over here, uh, I guess they'd hunt the great horn owls, which isn't very convenient. Yeah, maybe I, different biomes will have different creatures. Hunting may be more or less viable. I don't know. I guess the thing to do then, plan B, is we've got some livestock that we came around with. I think we're going to start slaughtering some of these. I'm not really into ranching too much, especially without DF hack to make our life a lot easier. So I think I'm going to be pretty brutal about slaughtering probably, probably everything. Oops. Let me keep the cats and the dogs around. But yeah, everything else is going to get slaughtered here. So they'll get slaughtered in the butcher shop. One of the things this will leave behind is hides. We'll also get, uh, we'll get meat that we can cook with. Um, we'll get fat that we can render into tallow, which is going to be very useful for our soap industry. But one of the things that's going to leave behind is hides. So what we're going to do is we're going to go workshops, clothing and leather. We're going to get a... Um, is that under farming? Okay, that's strange and questionable, but sure. We're going to get a tanner over here. The tanner will convert hides into usable leather. There we go. Use that. Yeah, I'm really going to have to stay on manual here because otherwise it's going to keep trying to use these iron bars. <laughs> which I definitely don't want to get used over there. Uh, so this will give us leather for this. Now, we still get a complaint about yarn. Hold on. Are any of these animals shearable? I guess that might be, at least short term, something to keep around. I think yaks might be. I mean, goats might be as well. I actually don't know. Water buffalo. Okay. Let me just do this for now. We'll leave a few animals around. What I need is a farmer's workshop, which I don't know if we've got. One of the things I like in the classic is you, you actually get a count of how many of each one of these you've got over here. But yeah, the farmer's workshop, this is where oh, you shear animals. Oh, I accidentally right clicked and closed everything. So let's put that down there. Make it out of chert, please, and thank you. And we'll see if we can get some, um, we, if we can shear some animals. I guess we're also going to have to weave it. Well, I think this will make the thread, which is what they need. I don't know if it needs cloth. We may end up building a loom, I don't know. So I believe it will automatically attempt to do these things. But let me put shear animals. I'll put a repeat. It'll cancel once it becomes unavailable. And spin thread as well. I'll put it on repeat just manually over here. Okay, both of them failed. That is going to be... I'm not sure we can deal with the strange mood. Unless we get a merchant that comes over and can sell us some stuff. All right, let's get this... Um, let's get a drawbridge connected. So under machines and fluids, we can build a lever. I'm going to build it right here next to the main staircase. And yeah, I don't really care what kind of material it uses. I mean, it's gonna use a mechanism no matter what, so it's gonna be okay. All right, this lever has been built. So now what I wanna do is link the lever and I'm gonna click on the bridge. There you go. So now the lever has a job, link building to a trigger. So a dwarf will come install a mechanism in the lever, install a mechanism in the bridge, and they will be linked. And then when we pull the lever, it will close the bridge. Probably killing people that are on it because that's the way it goes. I'm really worried about Minotaur here. I really don't want them to go crazy because they're super useful. Am I wrong about this message? Is there something... Yarn cloth. Yeah, I think it it does want it woven. Okay, let me go... Yeah, because I don't think any of the artifacts use thread. I wonder if there's any chance we have the thread kicking around. And all I need is maybe a loom to make it into cloth. Let's cross our fingers that like getting a loom and having it start weaving things is going to work out for us. 
but we are tanning a hide, so at least we'll have that. Now, it's possible we have the cloth. The way this works with this mood is they will only um, grab things in order. So if we didn't have any leather, even if we had the cloth around, it would. Uh, if the leather came first, it would balk. But it looks like it's picked up the leather now, and it's still complaining, so we must not have it. Um, loom, where are you collecting webs from? That's interesting. There's a bunch of loom, uh, jobs. Again, if we take a look at our labor screen and check standing orders, um, by default, it automatically weaves all thread into cloth and using any cloth. You could also make it just use dyed cloth and automatically collect webs. I just don't know where the webs are. Normally that's a cavern thing. So I don't, I shouldn't have to say weave thread into cloth or weave yarn into cloth. That shouldn't be required. It'll happen on its own. Weave thread. With, so there are webs somewhere. Is someone, uh, who's collecting webs right now? Athir is collecting webs. Where the heck are you? Are there webs on the surface? Giant brown recluse spider web. Okay, first of all, brown recluses are scary. That's fascinating. I don't think I ever remember seeing webs on the surface before. Maybe it's happened, but I hadn't noticed because, you know, the automation. But that is quite interesting indeed. Okay, I'm betting we're probably good on beds. Uh, you can use closest material for this. I don't want to pick individual beds. Cool. And then over here, these are going to be the guest rooms at the end. Okay, now we're out of that. And then doors. There and there. We'll start getting these down as well. Okay. Okay, so all of our bedrooms are ready to go. So I need to go into zone, bedroom, make sure multi is on. Just do that. Get nine more bedrooms. So dwarves will go and claim those. And couples can share a bedroom together. So this it might be plenty of bedrooms for all our current dwarves. And then we still have a little dormitory here for overflow. So that's going to be okay. We'll get back to the, uh, the tavern stuff later on. Oh, I'm really concerned here. Because, yeah, we clearly don't have anything to... Uh, to shear because it cancels immediately. Spin thread. This didn't insta cancel. Oh, we have some mule hair. Oh, no migrants this season. Maybe butchering the mule gave us hair. <clears throat> Is this going to make yarn? I actually don't know. I'm going to keep a little repeat job on here. And I think this might have happened automatically. Mule hair thread. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's going to cut it or not. But theoretically, this thread will be woven into cloth. I just don't know if it's going to be the right kind of cloth. And we're making silk thread <clears throat> from all this. Oh, uh, I really don't want Nine Natar to go crazy. Please. Oh, yeah, that's going to be woven there, but <clears throat> not sure that's going to help us. Not sure that's going to save the day. Um, a bunch of clean. Hmm. Oh, we had a lot of mule hair. All right. I'm suspecting this is going to fail. Yeah, there we go. I put the exclamation mark here to prioritize it. And then, yeah, it instantly failed because we don't have that. Oh, we also don't have any logs. Hello. Well, then, let's chop down some more trees. We like chopping down trees because it upsets the elves. You know, and that's always worth doing. We'll do a little bit of that. Oh, I'm really concerned about Minotaur. We, we kind of need a trade wagon to bring some yarn for us. Uh, and yeah, this thing here, that's some more iron, which is no good. Please go and remove that iron. It'd be great to have everything match as well, but 
The amount of work involved in that is probably more than I'm willing to, to bother with. Man, no migrants. That was a shame. Um, did we miss? I think I missed a trade caravan in this Let's Play, didn't I? Which no, luckily won't happen now because I got proper pop-ups going on for those. But I think that's what happened. Now, last time I checked, there's still a bunch of merchants just like chilling. I don't know why. Well, maybe they're leaving the map now. Maybe they're just taking a while. Uh, I might be able to queue up some more floor. Again, I want to select material in this case. Yeah, I wish I didn't have to click on each little block here. Or use a little bit of wood, that's going to be okay. Okay, so we still clearly need a lot more blocks to be made. So I'm going to wait on that. You are spinning thread. Minor tar. I'm sorry. Could I convince you to use silk instead? No, that's not an option. Dang. She really wants it to be made out of yarn. Let me pause a sec. Um, dwarf, fortress, yarn, cloth. I don't know if there's a quick... When we spun from animal wool, only a select group of animals have hair that type... Dang. And yeah, you spin it at a farmer's workshop. So, I mean, that's fine. And then a loom, you make it into cloth. That's all good. But the problem is we don't have the wool to start off with. I don't think I can tear these apart to get the material back. Nice if I could, though. animals. Alpaca, llama, sheep, troll? And that's it. Oh yeah, we are totally screwed. Poor Minotaur is definitely going to have a breakdown. And I feel terrible. I'm surprised no one's deconstructed those floors yet, but I guess our dwarves might be a little bit busy. Lots of storing items in stockpiles. Oh, I had meant to go and change this custom thing. Um, no longer... Like, don't move stone into here, please. And same thing here. I mean, sometimes I let them move, um, like, metal ores. Actually, that might not be a terrible idea. I might go and allow metal ores. Potentially in both, actually. Uh, stone. So it might be convenient to move them quicker. Uh, I might put a couple extra wheelbarrows in here. Let me just make another request for wooden wheelbarrow. Make me a couple more, please. There you go. Because then people can use wheelbarrows to move the metal rocks close to our workshops. And then it won't, the, the actual smelters, smelter people don't have to work as far, walk as far. I do need a bunch more smelters over here. Interesting, this task isn't active. Oh, I probably don't have charcoal. Or, no, I have more than 20 iron bars. That's why we're not currently doing smelting. Okay. I don't know if I have fluxstone yet. Hang on a sec. If I go to the smelter and I try to make pig iron. Yeah, we don't have any fluxstone. Now, I'm pretty sure with my embark is I did filter for places that had fluxstone. Um, there are five... Maybe six different types of stone that count as flux stone, which are used to make um, iron into pig iron and then pig iron into steel. And I would really like steel. So we'll just have to dig a little bit more, see if we can find some marble or limestone. I can't remember what they all are. Those two are definitely things, though. Uh, maybe I'll just do a little bit of digging now. So priority four, staircase. And let's go... Let's dig deeply and greedily, shall we? And then what I'll do here is I'll do a little side jaunt this way. 
and then continue digging down deeply and greedily. These little side passages are good because you can use drawbridges to block them off. You can trap them in things. So it's a little safety thing to have these little side runs from time to time as you're digging down. Okay, let's do that. Hopefully we hit a cavern layer as well. I don't know if that's going to give us anything we can shear, unless we fight a troll. And I really don't want to fight a troll right now, especially we don't have a militia. Suppose we might want to get one sorted. Let's get it started. So to be able to appoint our first uh, our first military, we do need a militia commander. So that is a noble title. We got a militia commander over here. We can assign. We'll pick someone. I'm going to take. Uh, well, Emush is going to go crazy here, so they're actually going to be a bad pick. Fisher Dwarf, congratulations! You are now going to be leading the military. So we can make a new squad. Um, whoa, pause, pause, pause. Um, let me come back to forming the squad. We've got combat. I did tweak my alerts over here. Oh, Minotaur has gone berserk. Damn. She went too long without being able to construct her, um, her artifact. So we got combat. Um, I did tweak my alerts, my announcements, so that combat shows up under alert and has that little sound effect. Emush has been found dead. Well, better Emush than a non-berserk dwarf. Yep. That's a real shame. We'll give her a proper burial. I'm so sorry, Emush. I feel very bad. On the other hand, it's your fault for deciding that you wanted that specific material that I couldn't do. I'm going to expand a, the hallway out this way. Wait, are we still fighting? Rygoth has been found dead. Dwarven child punches the miner. What? Rimtar is still fine. I thought Rimtar was dead. Oh, Rygoth was found dead. No, Rimtar is still going berserk. Oh, crap. This is really bad. Um, Let me make a random squad here. I think we can go right into metal armor in this particular run, because we should have plenty of metal. Oftentimes, I make leather first. I make a squad with that outfit. I'm going to add random people to the squad. Preferentially people who don't have jobs that have uh, tools that they would use. Um, and I'm going to ask you all to kill Rimtar if I can find them. Fortunately, there's no pick a kill from a, uh, a menu for some reason in the Steam version. Uh, Minertar. Oh, is Minertar dead now? Or are they just not in the list because they've gone berserk? Oops. Uh, two people have died. I don't see Minotaur in this list. Okay, I'll just tell the squad to station. So this just tells the squad, move to a certain area. Let's say we move you over there. No, there's definitely still some combat. Yeah, Rimtar is right over here. Okay. Kill Rimtar. I guess once they've gone berserk, they don't show up in our uh, list of uh, citizens. And unfortunately, we're basically even doing this, like, barehanded. Uh, we'll look at this combat log soon enough. Okay, I think the combat is over. Yeah, no more orders. Rimtar has been struck down. So here's Rimtar. This is tragic. This is a legendary miner who we really appreciated, and they took down at least two other dwarves along the way. Oh, that is that is really terrible. All for a lack of yarn cloth. I'm heartbroken. But that's that's dwarf fortress for you. That's the fun. All right, I just unforbid over here. There was a few things a little lock icon. Um, certain like combat items like if someone uses uh, bolts uh, and I think when you kill someone their loot gets flagged as forbidden so your haulers don't randomly run into the middle of battle to collect stuff that dropped in battle so you need to unforbid some stuff after battle like that 
But yeah, population has dropped, and we'll probably get some bad thoughts as well. Alright, let's, um... I'm gonna make this a high priority. Yeah, I'm just gonna blue out the side, so I'm gonna do a high priority here. But of course, we lost one of our miners. Just free up a pick, I suppose. I would still like to have more than one miner. Alright, let me just throw a couple more in here. Oh, I'm so heartbroken. Damn. Now, technically, Dwarf Fortress, the Dwarves should not ask, when they go in a strange mood, they shouldn't ask for any material you've never seen in your particular run. Um, but it's possible that with merchants and things like that, there was a piece of it at some point. Um, you know, maybe it was dropped off a random immigrant. You know, they brought some with them. Could be anything like that, which made it a valid target for a strange mood. The other bright side is a great way to learn you know, having bad things happen is how you learn in most games, and that is especially true, perhaps, in Dwarf Fortress. So, that oh, that is just tragic. So, when, uh, when a merchant caravan comes, I often like to pick up a couple of pieces of glass, a couple of different types of cloth and things like that, so that it's around and available for these strange moods. Oh, yeah, that yarn, that was really rough. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig out a tunnel over here, and I'm going to get ready to make some tombs in this area. I mean, people do sometimes like to visit the tombs and stuff, but mostly I think out of the way is going to be okay here. So we're going to do that, put it on the edge. It's going to give us plenty of room over here to build other production things. I do want to note, I don't know if I've mentioned it in this uh, little series yet, it's often more efficient to construct your fortress in sort of a vertical stacking kind of style, rather than spreading out on one floor. On the other hand, being on one floor looks really cool. Um... So yeah, and I think it's, it's a little bit better, I think, for like this beginner series to try to keep as much stuff in kind of one view as possible, which is what I'm trying to do here. All right, you keep digging out that way. It's going to be okay. Right into more chert, rock salt. No more minerals along the way. A little surprised. It's okay. Mostly I'm, I'm hoping to hit uh, some sort of flux stone. I guess uh, we were digging down. This is all rock salt. That's a lot of rock salt. Hematite, jet. Oh, chalk! Chalk is a... Hang on. Um, hello, Wiki. Flux. Chalk is a flux stone. Yes, I was right about that. So down over here on uh, Z level 24, there's some chalk that we can use. So let's go and do a mining command here. I'm going to do lowest priority, auto. And actually, we can, we can do... Oh, did it not? It doesn't do chalk. Because it's not a vein. I mean, that's kind of legit. Hold on. <clears throat> Let me cancel that. And go back to regular mining. Oh, auto-saving. Auto-saving. This this has been so stable. Maybe I will change it to not auto-save every season. Because the saving's not the fastest. There's a lot of stuff to save. Chuka 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 Okay. And I'm just going to say, listen, mine me out some of this chalk here. Because I'm going to want that for, for Fluxstone so we can make steel. I still want to work on the flooring over here. How are we doing in actual blocks? It's our block situation here. 52, lots of rock salt blocks. Okay, that's excellent. So, the risk of maybe overloading my dwarves. Do that. Oh, chert's also good. Again, wish there was maybe a bulk way. Maybe it's already in the game, but I don't think so. Make a double row here. Use up all the chert. Now that said, we had more. Oh, it might be counting the ones that are in construction. Okay. Oh, petitions. Hey, there we go. So, Caton Brass Searched is currently visiting our tavern. But they've had such a great time, they would like to join our fortress officially for the purpose of entertaining citizens and visitors. We can put them to work in the tavern, for example. All right, I approve. Now, Catton should show up now in here. There they are. What are they? Now reside. Very satisfying. Um, where do we find out your species? Oh, you're a dwarf. Okay. You are a dwarf. 
because you can tell because you need alcohol to get through the day. Either a dwarf or a YouTuber, one, one way or the other. Cool. So welcome to the group. Hope you have some fun. I wonder how we're doing on our beds here. Uh, closest material is fine for this. Good. Oh, excellent. And then our doors. Bedding weave probably wrap this up nicely as well. Indeed, that's the case. Cool. When those get installed, we'll designate these as bedrooms and attach them to our tavern. Oh, we have three extremely unhappy dwarves. So this tends to happen once you've had a fight. So Aerith over here is really unhappy. Yeah, seeing some dead bodies, retching on miasma, annoyed by the rain. That was real bad. We need to get those dead bodies away. Okay, this is finally done kind of here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build some... This is going to be priority one here. We're going to get some tombs going. What I'm going to do... Now, in Classic Dwarf Fortress... Okay, there we go. Like that. Classic Dwarf Fortress, you could just put down a bunch of tombs, and you uh, the actual individual coffins you would assign to dwarves. Here you kind of make them into rooms. It's slightly more awkward and requires doors and things. It's, it's, it's certainly more of an investment. Um, it, it does make the tomb stuff a little bit more awkward. Yeah, so this is at the priority one, so it'll, it'll happen very quickly. Oh, I need to put in some orders for some coffins. Uh, rock coffin. And yeah, we'll, we'll just ask for 10. So we can do that. Okay, and we'll be ready to go. We need to bury three people, right? The Berserk Dwarf and the two that they killed. I think that's correct. Let's get this dug out. Such a shame we lost our legendary miner because everything's a lot slower now. Um, we do have the automated door thing, so that should keep up. Oh, okay. This is something really annoying. So, some of your animals need to be grazing to not starve to death. The game doesn't warn you ahead of time that they're currently in a starving status. Um, DF hack in the classic version does. And also, I, again, I find it really tedious to manage um, pens and pastures. So... I, sh I could have just butchered more of them. I think I was thinking, oh, maybe... Oh, that's right. I was thinking, oh, maybe I could shear them for our um, for a strange mood. But apparently that didn't work out. I'm just going to go ahead and slaughter the goats. Uh, hold on. Let me double check. Some animals don't need to graze. I mean, your dogs and your cats don't. Um, most of your birds don't either. And... Um, see, there uh, and pigs. Pigs don't either. They just, I don't know, live off thin air. It's weird but it works let's not think about it too much okay we're gonna put some doors on here which is in, in the olden days not something we really had to do but we get that started and then yeah we really need the coffins to happen now you can change the priority of things um i don't think there's a shortcut to put it like all the way at the top in one go which is a little annoying i'm just gonna move it up Mostly above the other, like, stone crafting jobs. I want the coffins to be made before uh, blocks and doors and things. So some miasma over here from some rotting. Uh, what we can do temporarily is I'm going to put a stockpile just up on the surface here, which is going to be for corpses. Just because it'll get us, get it out from, stop it from rotting down in the basement here. Oh, these, uh, oh, they, they died from um, thirst and then rotted. That's actually really crappy, so we don't even get to chop them up for their resources. Okay, that is exceptionally poor. We might get some more dwarves that snap here. And I think it all it's all going downhill from this one artifact. That's really terrible. Okay, let's go and make some bedrooms. So we got multi on. I'm just going to multi these bedrooms up. 
I'm gonna hit okay. So we got these 12 bedrooms. Now what I'm gonna wanna do with these is add them to our inn. So our inn is called the Blockaded Muffin, which is a great name. Um, and so each bedroom, we're gonna sign to the Blockaded Muffin. I know it's a little bit tedious. I don't think there's any way to do this in bulk. But then what's gonna happen is visitors can rent rooms here, which I think increase the likelihood that they stay longer, have a good time, and decide to join the fortress. And apparently we are gonna need some more people. Now for the dwarves that are super cranky, I could decide to expel them. Because what can happen here is they can get cranky, they can go and decide to throw a tantrum and start busting stuff up or punching other dwarves, which can lead to this tantrum spiral where everyone gets more and more and more upset. So one of the possibilities you can do is, so Aerith over here, is I could hit this button and expel Aerith. Now if Aerith has any family, they would also be, I believe, be listed in the screen here, and they would also leave at the same time. I'm going to leave it be for now and hope we can recover. Although I don't have a lot of faith. Oh, we've discovered an expansive cavern deep underground. Okay. Do we get a, uh, a sidebar thing for that? No, and it doesn't zoom to it, which is a little bit annoying. But if we click this button to the deepest one, there we go. Our digging efforts have left us spotting the cavern. So the underground cavern is quite interesting. Well, I should really put a cut in here and then we can talk about the underground cavern next time. Let me put a little hotkey here. Da -da -da. Center, cavern one, presumably cavern one. Uh, each embark, I believe, will have three caverns. Um, it's possible that when you're digging, you actually miss one of the cavern layers. Like if we had been digging, say, through here, we wouldn't have actually spotted it. But Presumably this is cavern layer number one. It's actually a great place to do some farming. There's underground uh, mushrooms that can be chopped down for trees for wood so we don't have to deal with the surface. All sorts of good stuff. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and put a halt in here and hopefully next episode, our fortress doesn't collapse from some sort of giant tantrum spiral. Everyone's in a really bad mood and I can't blame them. Thanks for watching folks. See you next time.